In today's video, losing weight, losing body fat, building muscle while going through perimenopause and menopause, we're gonna talk about the science and the things that you can do to affect it in a positive manner. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rivella from ProPhysique.com. Today I got my man, Steve Bogrand here. So this is officially an episode of Science with Steve. Steven has his master's degree in exercise science. And we're gonna to talk today about menopause. Ooh, ooh, where do we even start? So you guys may or may not know that we coach a lot of female athletes. Quite a few of them compete and a lot of them compete well into their 40s, 50s, and even 60s at this age. And so we have a lot of people, a lot of people send me messages on Instagram. I made a female centric video the other day and a lot more people were interested in this topic. So I had Steve grab some research so we could discuss it. Yeah, and so I think for most people, the idea of menopause is difficult because you don't really know that you're done with menopause until you're done with menopause. And so you essentially start your perimenopause um, and a lot of times you'll get some hormone tests from your doctors and they'll look at your blood work and they'll be like, all right, well, it looks like we're in perimenopause. And you don't know when that menopausal transition is happening until you're technically done with it and you haven't had a cycle in 12 months. Yeah, so in, based on what we saw, that can take between two and 10 years to go through that transition and phase. And they lovingly call it second puberty or <laughs> midlife puberty. Yeah, sounds awful. I don't wanna, like, I would never wanna redo that, but it, it can be different for different women. And so how long that period is gonna be for you, your symptoms during that, how it impacts you, um, it's going to be different for different women. Yeah, and so I'll put on the screen here some of the symptoms that happen while you are in this perimenopause and menopause phase, just so you can get an idea and understanding. And as we as coaches, what we do each week with our clients is we, we're checking some wellness scores, yep. we're, we're figuring out what the best nutrition training cardio protocols are for them to reach their goals, whether that's building muscle, losing fat, competing, whatever it might be, just being happy in a bathing suit. And so I wanted Steven to break down some of the research so you can understand why we do some of the things we do and maybe some things that you can even do, implement on your own, even if you don't currently have a coach. Yeah, and so I think the big one that we're normally looking at here is the SWAN study and how it impacts women uh, over time. And so since it's just such, it has so many women that it's looked at uh, throughout the years that it's been running, it gives us a pretty good indicator of what's going on. The tricky part can be because when we start perimenopause, weight gain for most women tends to stay pretty stable and consistent. Uh, now, what happens is during that menopausal transition is we see that that still continues to be the case, but we see a decline in lean tissue or muscle tissue and an incline in body fat percentages and body fat gain during that time. But what makes that difficult is when we're in that transition, it's hard to know because we don't have the definition of that until we're done and until we're officially post-menopausal. Yeah, so with the advent of hormone replacement therapy, it's been quite popular for people to get involved in HRT. And just like with coaching, there can be some questionable practices in HRT. So let's talk a little bit about what are best practices, when we should get involved, and what should we should be looking at to be successful with, with a doctor. Yeah, so the first and foremost thing I would say is make sure that you feel comfortable with your doctor and you're going to somebody who has experience in this. Probably going to be an OBGYN or endocrinologist or possibly even a private company that deals with this um, and that's where their specialization lies. The biggest thing that I am seeing in the research as for why we're having those issues is changes in estrogen uh, and how that impacts our body, how that impacts where body fat is stored, how that can possibly impact hunger signaling. Uh, as well as all of the other things that kind of come along with that menopause transition, which can be pretty dang tough. Again, how aggressively you're feeling that is gonna be different for different women. Some women may be fine without having to worry about going to the doctor and the possibility of HRT. Uh, others may be absolutely riding the struggle bus throughout and it can be really difficult. What I've seen in the research is that, at least what it's saying right now, is that as long as you are under 60, the benefits might or will likely outweigh the risks associated with HRT, particularly with maybe like estrogen, progesterone, stuff, you know, supplementation or intervention. Yeah, so coaching athletes, I have some athletes that prefer to stay natural through this period. And so we're gonna talk about some of our nutritional, our cardiovascular and supplementation strategies that we use um, for athletes in this phase. The first thing to remember is that just like, uh, you know, phases of life, there are gonna be more difficult and less difficult periods of this transition phase. And so as a coach, what I'm looking for is if things are going well, 
Let's continue to push the body as we're able with training and nutrition to reach those goals. When we hit some sticking points, when we notice there are is some extreme fatigue, when we notice there is some mood changes, because that's going to be a part of it too. Depression, anxiety, things like that can increase. Taking some of the stress off the athlete, it can be very beneficial. Uh, now, when it comes to nutrition, I don't think the, the recommendations vary greatly from what we recommend right. and typical, but let's talk about it because if you're watching this video and you don't come from a background of athletics and sports like most of our athletes do, we want to talk about the basics around, you know, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates a little bit. Yeah, and so there's a couple schools of thought. Um, some will say because there can be so much more inflammation that something like a Mediterranean or a, you know, anti-inflammatory diet can be beneficial. I haven't seen enough uh, proof of that in the research yet to really necessarily support just that. But generally we're looking at things like, we probably wanna have higher protein intake. It's gonna help keep us a little bit fuller. It's gonna be harder to store as body fat and it's going to help us to keep lean tissue more so than having a diet that consists more in terms of just carbohydrates or fats. Uh, probably looking at less processed carbohydrate sources. Staying with things like fruits, vegetables, uh, that kind of thing that's gonna have more fiber content and give you more micronutrient density. Again, that's going to help us to fuel. It's going to help us to keep the muscle that we have. And it's gonna give us the ability to have good digestion along with that. The better digestion, the less stress on the system overall and in general, the better it's gonna be. And generally speaking, I like to have fats between 20 to 30% of total daily calories. Seems to be a really good spot to where, you know, we have enough for digestion and hormonal health uh, but not so much to where it's doing us a disservice. Of course, probably trying to stay away from too much saturated fats, stay with you know your healthy fats that are about one third polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and saturated fats, things like extra virgin olive oil. And if all that sounds complicated, which we know it is, our team at ProPhysique has created a free calculator. You go to prophysiquemacros.com, plug in your information. It's going to give you some macro ranges and it's actually going to give you some ideas on meal planning to give you an idea where the scientific recommendations from us as coaches would be so that you can start using an app, plugging in your nutrition information and figuring out, okay, where are my actual macronutrients? Because if you haven't been paying attention to your nutrition for the greater part of your life, and now you're starting to get concerned about body composition as you get into your 40s and 50s, great. I have great news for you. The body will respond, okay? You are going to be able to add muscle and lose body fat if you haven't been doing that for long periods of time previously. So getting involved in a attempt to, you know, improve your body composition at any age is a wonderful idea. Absolutely, in particular for those of you who maybe have not been active, who have had, you know, very sedentary jobs, those kind of things. We have seen that in those populations, even doing something as uptaking a walking regimen and starting hitting a step count each and every day can have a really nice beneficial impact on things. And so it's not about necessarily putting yourself through the ringer. And I would say for most women in that menopausal phase, it is normally gonna be the opposite. It's us managing, possibly pulling things back so that you're not dying all the time. You're not having increased stress on those symptoms. Right. Of course, unless some that will have lesser symptoms, we can get away with it. Yeah. Uh, but for many of my women around that, you know, kind of 50 year range, when that menopause is happening, traditionally, uh, I will pull back. Oh, I've been training five days a week, but I'm really tired. All right, well, let's pull it back to three or four and see how we feel. Yep, yep. And remembering, it's although it's hard to build muscle, it's very easy to maintain muscle. So getting in the gym and weight training a couple days a week is going to be great for you. And people are often concerned about insulin sensitivity. More muscle improves your insulin sensitivity. So there are just so many benefits to resistance training, making sure you're keeping lean body mass, not only in terms of body composition, but in terms of long-term well-being and health, um, you know, losing muscle and losing bone density are two of the most problematic issues for, for people as we age, especially women, because I think they yes. tend to be less active in sports and lifting weights. Maybe not currently. I feel like when I go to the gym, it's all women nowadays. Well, menopause actually can like make that worse. Realistically, right. so the hormonal changes that you're having, it's going to mean, okay, we have more visceral body fat typically, which is going to put us at a higher risk for things like cardiovascular disease. Um, it, it can impact things like insulin right. sensitivity. Uh, so doing the things of, you know, paying attention to our nutrition and living a healthy and active lifestyle, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go to the gym four or five days a week, but maybe you go at least a couple days a week and you're outside a lot as much as you can. Um, and you're just out there moving can have such a huge impact on helping us to make sure that we're lowering down those risk factors during this difficult time in life. 
Yeah. So if you're if you're unfamiliar with with where to go as far as like a hormone therapy uh, standpoint, we work with a company called Aspire Rejuvenation. They are based out of Florida. They do have multiple locations around the country, but they do a little bit of telemedicine. You have to do an in person visit. But getting that blood work done, getting it looked at, can really start to address some issues. They do a, a consultation with you once you get your blood drawn. They do the prescription for blood draws because a lot of people will say what should i be looking for with my blood work general doctors are not really going to be concerned with the things that are going to cause uh, these big changes right they're going to look at body composition and say hey you're healthy or not healthy whereas a, a, a company like aspire rejuvenation they're more looking at optimization so this is where we often have our athletes go because outside of our scope of practice beyond you know prescribing nutrition and diets and training protocols and those kind of things we want to make sure that we're getting a full picture for athletes that are not getting the proper response so that would be the next step if you've if you've already started taking nutrition training cardio recovery seriously yep. and particularly if you are one of those individuals that's really having a difficult time during that perimenopause period because that's what we're going to call it until we're done um, that's where i would normally say Go talk to a doctor, go talk to a licensed physician, whether that's you know yeah. a private clinic, whether that's your OBGYN, whether that's an endocrinologist, someone that you can trust is gonna have the right information to get the right testing done for you and make sure they can understand and interpret that in a way that's going to benefit you. Yeah, and I, I wanna give you guys some hope. I'm gonna show you my client, Miriam Jenkins, who just turned 59 years old. I'm gonna put a video over on the screen here just so you can see. Now, listen, she played basketball as a youth. She got into bodybuilding in her 30s and 40s, and she's now in her late 50s, about to be 60. And she's just maintained a, a fantastic physique over the years. So yeah. there is the possibility of success with this if you were just getting started or if you've been doing it for a long time. Um, and understanding that can sometimes give you all the you know, you know, motivation you need when you see someone else who's doing it. It can absolutely be super difficult when we're, yeah. when we're in struggles, seeing somebody else that's yeah. overcome can be a real big benefit. Yeah, and that's what I love sharing with you guys on this channel. So comment below what you'd like to see in regards to this. Would you like to see more clients that have gone through this fat loss phase? You know, we do run a transformation challenge everywhere. We have thousands of people enter and make some amazing progress. You've probably seen me post Drea, who looks like this when she started and this when she ended. Um, she was not young by any means, right? Like she did this at a later time in life. And so when you see these kind of results, it can inspire and i know when i'm looking to you know get into a fitness program or compete i'm looking at the people that kind of fit my mold and go okay if they can do it i can do it yeah and i think one of the other cool things is that even though there's still a lot more research needed around this uh, like dr bill campbell is running a pilot study with menopausal women uh, and dieting and looking at how we can be more productive with that to control body weight control body fat and help control those changes without uh, putting them through the ringer nonstop or helping them feel good while we do it. Yeah. So hopefully this was addressing that question because I've been getting this question so frequently. If you guys would like a free consultation, I'm going to put a link below. You go there, sign up, fill out some information. We'll be in touch shortly and we'll set up a free consultation with you. We can just discuss options and if it makes sense for you to be working with a coach at this point. Otherwise, let us know what we can provide for you free resource wise to help you on your journey. I'm thinking we can probably show a, like a day of life of eating. We can talk about some specific training protocols and cardio protocols. Uh, so let us know what you would like to see. Um, and if you enjoyed this type of research, if you want Steven to do more of it, let me know about that as well. Oh God. <laughs> he read papers for four hours. So my brain hurt. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll talk to you tomorrow.